topics 4.1 to 4.4 part 2. Now that we've had an overview of cell communication, we're going to look in depth at an illustrative example, epinephrine and G protein coupled receptor systems. How does epinephrine get liver cells to bring about this response? What's the effect on the G protein of epinephrine binding with the receptor? How does that phosphorylation cascade work? I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that if you're really going to learn AP Bio, you've got to interact and get feedback. That's what happens on learn-biology.com. We're so sure of that, that your subscription comes with a money back guarantee. Before we delve into this, I want to let you know that I have a song that's a rap about cell communication, which covers much of this material. Cellular communication works through phases three. The context for what we're about to review or learn is the fight or flight response, and that has effects throughout our bodies. One of the effects is the effect on the adrenal glands, which produce a hormone that's called epinephrine or adrenaline, and that acts upon the liver to get it to produce glucose that goes into the blood as part of the fight or flight response. Epinephrine is also known as adrenaline. It's a polar water-soluble hormone. You can see these hydroxyl groups over here and over here. Here's an amino group. This is not going to be able to diffuse into the cytoplasm. It's going to bind at the membrane. Note that epinephrine's effects are widespread but tissue specific. So epinephrine is going to get released from the adrenal glands into the bloodstream. It's going to go everywhere. It's going to touch every cell in your body, but only tissues with receptors are going to respond. That response will differ based on tissue types. So all of these are adaptations that are part of the fight or flight response. So over here we'll decrease digestion because when you're trying to fight off some mortal threat, you don't need to be digesting at that moment. You want to increase your heart rate so that you can deliver more food and oxygen to your cells. Pupil dilation, more light, you're going to have better senses. Conversion of glycogen to glucose, that gives your cells, your muscle tissue, more energy to fight or flee. And bronchial dilation allows you to get more oxygen into your lungs so you can deliver more oxygen to the cells of the body. Epinephrine interacts with cells in the liver and it induces changes that causes those liver cells to take stored glycogen that's a polysaccharide and to hydrolyze it into the monomers of polysaccharide, glucose. That glucose then diffuses into the bloodstream and there it goes to the muscles of the body and to other organs as well and that provides energy to fight or flee as part of the fight or flight response. The question for us is how does epinephrine get liver cells to bring about this response? So we're now looking at the off state before epinephrine is released and in this moment the receptor is unbound. There's no epinephrine in the system. There's a nearby membrane protein that's called a G protein. A G protein is not a receptor, it's a membrane embedded protein, and it can oscillate between two states. Now it's off, it's inactive. Nearby the G protein is a membrane embedded enzyme, not a receptor, but an enzyme that's called adenylyl cyclase. That is actually the correct pronunciation. And it's also in the off state. And as a result, it's not activating the second messenger. What happens when epinephrine enters the system? First thing that happens is that epinephrine binds with a G protein coupled receptor. So here's epinephrine and here it's binding with the receptor. This is a complicated protein and we've talked about allosteric shifts in relationship to enzymes where when something binds at an allosteric site, it can then change the active site. Well, the same mechanism is at work here. Epinephrine is binding over here and that change kind of ripples through this protein and it induces a change over here. Now, right at this moment, the nearby G protein is still dormant. It's still bound to GDP. GDP is a relative of ADP and it's the low energy form. It can oscillate between this low energy form and a high energy form that we're going to see in a minute. And that happens when the G protein becomes activated. Are you asking yourself, how am I going to get a four or a five on the AP bio exam? It's a good question because it's a hard 
test, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. What's the effect on the G protein of epinephrine binding with the receptor? Well, the G protein is then able to interact with the receptor. We noted before that the receptor has changed on its cytoplasmic side, and that enables the G protein to interact with that part of the receptor, and that causes the G protein to discharge GDP, that's the low energy form, and to bind with GTP, that's the high energy form. And again, notice that this has three phosphates over here, just like ATP. This only has two phosphates over here, like ADP. The result is that the G protein now becomes activated. So what happens to the G protein once it's bound with GTP? It drifts in the membrane. It ultimately binds with adenylylcyclase, this membrane-embedded enzyme. That activates adenylylcyclase. And adenylylcyclase's substrate is ATP, and it converts it into a molecule called cyclic AMP, which is the second messenger in these G-protein-coupled receptor systems. Note that ATP is triply phosphorylated. This only has one phosphate, and the AMP stands for adenosine mono, mono as in one, phosphate. What have we done? We've taken our initial messenger and we've transduced it, creating the second messenger. So let's review what we've talked about so far. We've talked about reception. We have the ligand, which is epinephrine. It binds with the G protein coupled receptor. The receptor changes shape on its cytoplasmic side. It interacts with the G protein, causing it to discharge GDP, which is what it's bound to when it's dormant, and bind with GTP, which is what it binds with when it's active. The G protein then, in turn, can activate adenylylcyclase, which takes its substrate, ATP, and converts it into cyclic AMP, the second messenger. What we're going to look at next is the cellular response. The second messenger, cyclic AMP, is going to activate a chain of relay molecules. These are called kinases or kinases. And this activation involves one kinase activating the next kinase activating the next. I've only put three in this chain, but there can be many, many more. And that's called a phosphorylation cascade. How does that phosphorylation cascade work? The kinases are activated by phosphorylation, by gaining a phosphate. And once they're activated, what they do is they activate the next kinase in the chain. So here we have protein kinase 1 that acts upon protein kinase 2 by phosphorylating it. So now protein kinase 2 is active, phosphorylated. What does it do? It activates protein kinase 3 by phosphorylating it. I've only shown three, but there can be many more in this chain, and we get this domino-like effect of one kinase activating the next and activating the next. Once we get to adenylylcyclase, then each step involves multiple activations. Adenylylcyclase will activate many cyclic AMPs. Each of these cyclic AMPs will start different phosphorylation chains, and the result is signal amplification. We had one epinephrine enter the system, but by the end, and I couldn't of course depict that here, but you'll have the activation of millions of enzymes to bring about a massive cellular response. In the case of liver cells and the way that they're acted upon by epinephrine, the response is activation of the terminal enzyme, which is glycogen phosphorylase. And what glycogen phosphorylase does is it converts glycogen, again a polysaccharide, into glucose, a monosaccharide. That glucose diffuses into the blood, giving you energy for the fight or flight response. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.